So welcome back to the Heart to Heart podcast. And my guest today is none other than cannabis or Canada's favorite cannabis influencer, Jackie Childs. So Jackie, <laughs> welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Maybe I'm your favorite cannabis influencer. I think you've won a few awards, Jackie, haven't you? I have. Yes, I have. Yes. Which what is makes it? The, me, which the makes 2019 me less cannabis favorite. awards? Pardon? Which one was it? The 2019 Cannabis Awards? I won, yeah, I won 2019 O Cannabis and I won 2020 right before lockdown, the Leafly Award. Okay. So basically yeah. we can we can basically call you uh, cannabis, <laughs> Canada's favorite cannabis influencer, wouldn't you say? We can. We can. <laughs> We're gonna do it today on, on the show, okay? We'll say it on the show, yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I've known Jackie for, for a while now. I did a podcast with her actually uh, probably almost close to two years ago, probably more like a year and a half ago now. Yep. Uh, I don't believe it's actually been that long. Uh, we've known each other through the cannabis industry. You have a lot of, of similar uh, or, or uh, mutual friends rather. And um, yeah, so happy to have you on the, on the show today. So Jackie, um, how did you get started in, in the cannabis industry? Um, how I got started was my, I am an influencer in the music industry for about six or seven years. Um, I had sort of grown kind of like quite a following online and I really just started writing about my experiences with CBD and how I was, um, not well, and I was using and abusing pharmaceuticals, my prescriptions that were prescribed from, for PTSD, anxiety, depression, like many of us. And I just started to share that this magic CBD, I'm going to give it a try. And whether I was like full on to excited about it or whatever my, whatever was going through, I was sharing authentically. Um, and I didn't buy the whole CBD thing for a while. Um, actually, not until I added THC to it that I, that I started to buy in. Um, but I just shared my experience as authentically as I could on social media. I got a ton of love. I got an equal amount of hate. And uh, that it kind of took off. I, um, I was still in the, more in the music industry and, and music events and festivals, etc. And... But even with there on those platforms, it kept coming up in interviews. It kept coming up in magazine conversations and stuff. It was just, they wanted to know like, oh, you're, so you're using cannabis now. And no, I didn't. Um, I mean, I, I probably, I tried it in high school, but I didn't inhale. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but for health and wellness reasons, um, now that I'm, I'm menopausal, I'm for, soon to be 48 years old. And I just started sharing that journey and it took off. And it was really bumpy in the beginning because mainstream people, mainstream um, my sponsors and brands that I work with weren't super happy about it. And I wouldn't even say it was 50-50. It was something like 90 of them were against, 90% to 10% were against it. They didn't want any public conversation about cannabis use. So I started to feel great. I was, start, I was managing my Crohn's, my anxiety, depression with cannabis. And I thought, forget it. I can't play this facade this game anymore um fire me let me go i'm back on the i'm talking about cannabis it's helped me tremendously plant medicine and like the and the whole community so i feel i owe the community to share and the truth about what's going on so if the mainstream didn't want me or didn't want to work with me anymore well that was fine some of them have come back on board three years later <laughs> Well, it's good that some of them came back around and, uh, and kind of learned their lessons, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious too, like, you know, when you were on uh, the pharmaceuticals, like, was it just that they weren't alleviating the symptoms that you were having? Was it that they were causing some side effects? Was it a little bit of both? Like, what made you decide to say, like, you know, I want to come off uh, the, the, the pharmaceuticals and, and try something different? Uh, to be completely honest, um... Uh, one is good, 10 is better. I was really abusing my pharmaceuticals. And I'm sure, and I can, I, I would say when I started them, it was supposed to be like a two year thing. Like we'll get your serotonin levels up. You'll start to feel good, you know, go back into the gym and the whole, the whole lifestyle change, which these pharmaceuticals will help you. Um, two years turned into almost seven. 
And like I said, I was very low dose to the beginning. And by the end of it, I was on nine, I mean, Ciprolax, Welbutrim, Ativan, Seroquel. Like I was, I wasn't as depressed when I started as when I ended. <laughs> so, you know, like it was, and I felt like a fraud. Like I felt fake. Like every time I would laugh or cry or I would write something because I'm a writer, um, I would write something like from my heart, but I was like, is that really my heart? Or is this the pills? To-? Like, it was really messed up. Um, I ended up having a full hysterectomy. I had fibroids. I had lesions on my liver and kidney. And all the side effects that my Ativan, Seroquel, Ciprolax, there's so many more. Um, something to get up, something to sleep, something to help with heartburn, something to help with, you know, like swell, like just a mess. Um, all this, pretty much all the side effects I had. <laughs> yeah. And, and one thing too, I think that, I mean, you're obviously, you know, a very creative person. You're, you're an entrepreneur. I mean, that's, that's how, uh, that's just, you know, the, the way you are, the way you were born, I think. Um, so, you know, do you feel that like, I've, cause I've heard this from, from some other people as well, that, you know, if you're that type of person, if you're someone who's an entrepreneur and someone who's creative, do you feel that, you know, the antidepressants and some of the medications that you just mentioned may even have even more of a negative effect uh, on someone like yourself, if you're a type of personality than, than someone say who you know, is a little bit more subdued and is not as creative just because do you find that kind of just like, you know, takes away that, that creative um, component, you know, and, and I'm Definitely. asking this, you know, based upon what you just said um, just now about, you know, writing something and then not feeling, you know, as like authentic about it. Do you feel like it kind of hampered, you know, a little bit on your, on your creativity? Definitely. It definitely did. And I would say to my husband, Drew, who says, hello. <laughs> Tell Drew I said hi. <laughs> um, he, uh, he was saying the same thing. Like he was, you know, we're, you're really passionate, Jackie. And that's why I fell in love with you. You have very high highs and you have very low lows. And that is okay. We're not all supposed to go through life like this. Some of us are very re- reactionary and passionate. And that is probably why I, you know, write and draw and am interested in the things I'm interested in and why I am so, I, I love edibles, high dose edibles. I love mushrooms. I love, like, I, I want to get into self and, and write and feel. And some of the things we feel aren't so great and aren't so nice. And I think that's okay. Like, right? I, I, I mean, for me, I think my crazy is very manageable and very necessary for the life I lead and the type of person I am. Yeah, I think sometimes too, we kind of, you know, demonize, uh, you know, all negative emotions as, as something that like, you know, we should never experience when in reality, you know, we're all going to experience a different you know, spectrum of emotions, you know, of course, we're going to feel sad, sometimes angry, sometimes, you know, these are like normal, normal emotions. And to try to, you know, say that, you know, we shouldn't feel like this uh, anytime at all, and that we should be happy all the time is kind of ridiculous. And, it, and it's not it, it, you know, kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, people, you know, they'll, they'll get angry about being angry, or they'll get sad about being sad. And it's like, you know, if you just, you know, let that emotion pass you know then then you know you can uh you can let the emotion pass and then you'll perhaps experience some more positive emotion you know so i agree with you completely you know and i think that you know for a lot of creative types like like yourself you know you do have to experience that that wide range of emotions and that's why you know you are able to come up with you know such great ideas and to be a great entrepreneur when you know when through the, the seven years, um, I was going through a horrific divorce, really tumultuous of two young boys and their stepkids and just a lot. And to call the doctor and say, look, I, I don't want to feel this anymore. I am way too sad. What do you got? And then, you know, within two weeks, I'm pretty much dead. And I'm going to throw this out there to add some juice to your podcast, but I hadn't had an orgasm. <laughs> I've it's, heard that. That's that's it's a very very common thing. Women on SSRIs, they have a really tough time having an orgasm because uh, I was so. I mean, I was so medicated, and my partner, my love of my life, is the most amazing, attentive human in the world. And that then I'm that is weighing on me. Like, okay, so now I got to fake. Now I got to lie um, because these these meds make me not. I won't cry, but they also don't. 
They don't let you experience that, like let go, the pure, the realest joys in life, like the purest forms of ecstasy. Those, they, they limit that. And then, so then I'm dealing with a whole other sort of depression and anxiety and, you know, like that everything is chemical and that I'm pretty much, I have to fake norm, being normal. Yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't sound like, like it's very healthy. And I think that, you know, it's, it's important for people to know that, again, that, you know, it's okay to experience, you know, a wide range of emotions, and you don't need to, to feel happy all the time. And, you know, I'm not saying that all SSRIs are bad all the time, you know, if they help you, then great. But, you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, they don't, they don't help. And, and just for people knowing, I mean, the stats really are is that they help roughly about you know, 20% of people. So, you know, that's, that's, you know, a significant number, but it's still only one out of five, roughly, you know, I'm right. getting this data from, you know, they've done uh, a, a study recently where they you know, basically examined, you know, people who took antidepressants without it. And, you know, they said that after about six to eight weeks, about 40 to 60 people out of a hundred who were taking uh, antidepressants got better. Whereas in the placebo group was about 20 to 40. So, you know, roughly about 20 people, wow. Um, you know, it'll, 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 uh, it'll help uh, out of 100, which again, is only about 20%, one out of five. So, you know, we do need to look at, you know, other alternatives, you know, like cannabis. Um, and if you can tell us, you know, I know that you said that you needed to add the, the THC in into there in order to get that uh, effect to relieve your symptoms. But, you know, just tell us a little bit maybe about your cannabis journey and how you started off with CBD and, and got into to THC and how those alleviate your symptoms. Well, it was actually, my in-laws are in their late seventies um, and they are lifelong cannabis lovers, lifelong. And yeah. my, it's actually my husband's entire family. Um, they're mostly California stateside and, um, and very successful, very educated, very uh, high level performers at everything they do. Uh, lots of letters before and after their names. And they're very immersed in the cannabis industry. So <laughs> what I had learned growing up was, you know, the Nancy Reagan, just say no to drugs. And it's all bad, all drugs. And unless it's prescribed from your doctor, then just like open wide. <laughs> yeah. And really that's how I was raised. So when his parent, when my husband's parents kept suggesting CBD and then telling me about how all their old friends are golfing again and playing tennis again, and they're rubbing it on their knees and they're doing all. So I, I took some, um, I, I mean, I, I took the bottle from him. I didn't use it. I started to do a little bit of my own research. And then I, one afternoon, I tried some CBD and I pushed my meds away. Um, the next afternoon, I tried a little bit more, just the oil, just under the tongue, a little, I don't even remember what it was. I think it was 1200 milligrams, a little, sub, little, a little drop. And by the third day, I put packaged up on actually I packaged up all my pills um there was a lot they were making a lot of noise and I put them in a Christmas stocking and I hid them in the basement with all the Christmas stuff because I knew I'd forget where I threw them and, and and they would be readily available so I wasn't healed of anything or better but the CBD was helping I hadn't had Crohn's flare-ups um I was working out in the you know in the community and I wasn't having massive panic attacks. I wasn't, but I, I mean, the withdrawal was something else. I was a sweaty, itchy, gross mess. And, um, and then like, just picture it for a second. I wear wigs and lashes and all kinds of clothes and I got plastic parts. On top of that, I'm a sweaty, itchy mess. So I was like a total train wreck. And I was just hoping and praying that CBD would fix all this. And it didn't. Um, it helped, it didn't cure anything, it alleviated, but I was still, there was still something missing. So with just my own research again, um, reaching out to a lot of different doctor friends and different communities and platforms on social media, I started to research THC and my husband smokes every day, all the time. I don't know why I was so adverse to it when I said, can I smoke a joint with you? When you go out on the deck tonight, I'm gonna smoke a joint with you. He's like, really? Uh, yes. And it wasn't, I wasn't sold. I choked my lungs out. My makeup ran off my face. I looked like Alice Cooper. It wasn't something that, and it smells like it wasn't initially for me. So I got some THC oil. It was a low dose oil. 
I added it to my CBD. So I made my own sort of one to one or five to five, whatever it was. I was, and it helped. I slept better. Um, I didn't have restless legs. I wasn't getting the cramping in my stomach that I wasn't sure if that was stomach anxiety. Like, what is this? Is this Crohn's or is this my anxiety? It all magically <laughs> within a few days, those really, really subsided. So they were so not like they, it didn't affect my, nor my normal daily routines, which it had so greatly in the past, even on pharmaceuticals. So then I was like, okay, hey, I've got to find another way. I tried vaping, which I, I like, but then I was scared by the vape crisis, the vape scares. I didn't know what I was doing. Like I, I've had enough harm from pharmaceuticals. I didn't want cannabis to be doing the same thing. So I really went low and slow, like they say, and uh, did a lot of research. And I found that, um, this is another one of my, I like to throw the word suppository out there. Suppositories, <laughs> CBD, THC suppositories um, worked phenomenally, helped tremendously because they put the, they put what you need right to the source. So for me anyway, and um, a little edible, a low dose edible at night, a little of my CBD oil in the morning and I'm good. I, my routine is very, it's like my little ritual. It's not a big deal. It doesn't feel like medicine to me. It doesn't feel, I don't feel like I'm, you know, I'm failing. I don't feel like I'm right. It's a plant. It's a plant, um, a plant that has serious side effects and serious affects. I get it, but it works for me. And it, and just even just a little bit and maybe I don't know. You talk a lot about placebos. Like, I don't know. I, I just have so much hope and faith in cannabis that it's been working. And it's, I, um, I am no doctor. <laughs> and whatever it is, it works for me. I grow my own. I press my own. I make my own oils with the help of my friends, hybrid farms in Ottawa. I make my own suppositories and lotions and potions. And it's working. I'm three years in. So I'm that's amazing and it's important for people to know too like your story is 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 important because there's a lot of people who you know uh are are trying cannabis sort of as as a last resort so to speak and because of that you know they're they're expecting you know some pretty good results you know right away um uh, because you know they think okay well you know this is this is my last shot to really really help myself um and it's important for people to know that like Cannabis is, you know, a very, very complicated plant. You know, there's, there's different medicines within cannabis. So, you yeah. know, you chat about CBD, you know, you chatted about THC, you know, there's other cannabinoids like CBN that people are using for sleep. Of course, there's terpenes in the medicine as well. But, you know, I think the most important message that you just said is that you had to take some time, you know, and figure out what works for you. For and you me. Know, a lot of people who come see me, you know, I can guide them and I can, you know, give them some direction as to how they can use their medicine effectively. But ultimately, you know, the people who do best with cannabis are the people who are able to listen to their body and to be self-aware and to make some of their adjustments on their own. Because, I, you know, if you're, if you're using CBD and it's not working for you, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's a good time to quit cannabis. You, you may in fact need just a little bit of THC or you may in fact need a lot of THC. So, you know, it's, it's really, I'm really, you know, happy that you shared your journey with us today because, you know, a lot of people need to know that, you know, it may not work on the first dose, you know, and you might have a bad experience with, 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 with THC, especially if you're just using that alone. And, you know, sometimes people find that they do need to add, you know, THC in order to make the CBD effective. So I really appreciate you sharing that. And it exactly that it was, I was so hopeful, but it was a long, slow process. And, uh, and it wasn't what my friends were using or what they were doing. I had to journal. Um, I did actually speak to my physician about it. She wasn't, she just says, I don't know enough about it you're going to, you know, you'll have to do the research and really, yeah, that's, you'll have to do the research instead. Cannabis isn't like the same as regular pharmaceuticals. You just call up your doctor and they give you a pill. It really is a very individualized, you know, each of our own journeys are so different. There were certain strains and certain that would make me paranoid or make me freak out. And then I was like, Oh no, am I, what's happening? It, it was a long, slow process. And I'm really, I'm happy where it's at <laughs> right now. I'm very happy where it's at. 
Yeah, it sounds like you're doing you're doing great with it. And and another you know point that I uh, I wanted to um, make too is because you did touch on the vaping for a second, and we did have this vaping scare. I think it was maybe in 2019 now, somewhere around there, the early, early beginnings of 2019, where you know we had this vaping scare, um, and some people are still you know concerned about that as they should be. Um, but you know what I want to note is that. Um, the, the culprit of, of all this has been identified and it's something called vitamin E acetate. And, you know, when people were, were getting these mysterious lung diseases, as, as so they were called, um, they, uh, they were generally using cartridges that had vitamin E acetate. And, you know, when you're, when you're purchasing cannabis products, you know, make sure that you are getting it from a reliable source. Um, you know, of course, you know, I think that, you know, Health Canada, you know, does do a pretty, I'm not saying they're perfect by any means, but, you know, I think they do a decent job anyway in regulating the industry in Canada. Like, I don't get too many, um, you know, upset patients with regards to, you know, uh, uh, product from, from LPs and stuff like that. But of course, too, you know, I, I'm not against, you know, people making their own medicine, going their own medicine. Um, you know, I think that people should be allowed to do that. I would never, you know, take that away. Um, from people. And that's something that you do as well. Is that right, Jackie? You, you do yes. a lot of growing on your own. So do you want to talk? Yeah. About um, I, a part of my, when I was on all the pharmaceuticals, um, occasionally we would be, we would be away somewhere in the world and Drew would say, do you want to stay another week? And I would be like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do without my drugs? Like my pills, like, my, you know, my anxiety meds. Yeah. And I, stuff like that really bothered we'd be out on a boat and he's like let's just stay out here for another two days or three days I'm like well I can't I have my you know I'll go crazy so yeah. part part of all that was I took control of everything I like I, I like to grow my own I have a I have my own designated grower I grow my own as well at home but I have a designated grower I work very closely with everything as far as the nutrients and the soil and what's being you know what strains we're growing what we're and why we're growing them I'm very very much involved in my in my health and it's I think it's I almost think it's funny that so many people aren't <laughs> like you, you really have no idea what you're putting in just because you're cute doctor in your lab coat prescribed said whatever what about doing a little research or doing a little reading or you know like even I started because of the cannabis I started growing my own fruits and vegetables um I'm totally into all kinds of plants that like aloe plants how amazing they are and to grow into so it's just what cannabis has done for me has changed my entire like it's changed my entire lifestyle how I how I think how I feel how I relate to the world it's really, really, I mean, all I was doing was trying to get off my pharmaceuticals. And what has happened is amazing. Um, I'm now I'm invest, I'm an investor in, in startups and, and women owned businesses around the world. Um, when inspiring, wonderful humans reach out to me and like, your story is so amazing. And you're I'm like, really? I just thought I was a drug addict loser. <laughs> like, like I was such a, I really, I, when people say this story is inspiring, I thought, what I was abusing my pharmaceuticals I was up all night or I'd sleep for three days and and I just started sharing that and so many people reached out to say like this is this is me or this is my story and yeah. I love I love that about the community and I'm, I'm so happy to you shared you know your story about um you know the the antidepressants and, and being away on vacation and you know thinking that, you know, if, if you're not going to, if you don't have access to them, then, you know, your, your mood's going to change you know, very, very negatively. Cause I think a lot of people are in that position. And I've heard, you know, from, from lots of, of, uh, of my patients even who have said that like, they'll go away for like a long weekend. And, you know, if they forget their medicine, like by the second or third day, like their antidepressants, I mean, um, then by the second or third day, like, like they just feel like completely miserable you know, and, um, and, you know, we, we have this, you know, uh, this thing where, you know, people like, oh, you don't want to get addicted to, to cannabis. And, you know, I understand, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, Sorry. Uh, that's okay. We're, we're to pause on this a way to mute me. We have to pause uh, for one second. Oh, no. Are you okay? <laughs> everything's good. Everything's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, people should, should understand that, you know, for sure you can become dependent on, on cannabis in some ways, but you can also become dependent on, on antidepressants, you know? Right. Uh, 
SSRIs that people take, like things like, you know, Prozac and, and Paxil, things like that. And I you did, know, oh, I've had a lot of people tell me you can't be addicted to those. How are you addicted to those? Yes, I was. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's what I, I see it too. You know, people will say that like, you know, you're not addicted, you're like dependent. Well, you know, tell that to someone who, who needs to take their medicine every day and see how they feel if you, if you take away their medicine for, for two or three days. They're gonna yeah. tell you they're addicted to it, right? They're gonna say that they're going through severe withdrawal effects. So, you know, I don't really buy that like at all that there's like a, a difference between dependence and addiction because ultimately what's happening is the exact same thing. Like you're taking away a substance that people are using consistently. And then when you take that substance away, people are getting severe withdrawal effects. So, you know, I don't, I don't really see the difference between, you know, addiction and independence. And I know that, you know, there's lots of physicians out there who have said, you know, they've even written, you know, blogs on it indicating that there is a big difference, but really when you boil it down to, and you ask the patients, there isn't any, any difference at all. And saying that there is, 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 is really just bullshit in, in my opinion. <laughs> So I think that, you know, it's good for people to know that, you know, you can get, you know, addicted to antidepressants. And if you don't take them at the right time each day, you know, you will experience withdrawal effects, just like, you know, quote unquote, a drug addict who's addicted to street drugs will. Right. You know, maybe some of the effects won't be as bad, but maybe some of the effects actually will be. You know, if you're on a really high dose of antidepressants, you take them, you take those away you can have really, really severe withdrawal effects. What What do you think of Seroquel? What do you know about Seroquel? Seroquel, you know, a lot of people are using, it's, it's maybe psychotic, first of all, but I mean, a lot of people are, are using this, you know, as a more or less like a mainstay uh, treatment for, for sleep at night, insomnia. And, you know, um, I think that a lot of people should be aware of that. Like, I think a lot of people taking Seroquel don't even know that it's an antipsychotic. Um, and unfortunately, too, you know, it does for some people tend to put weight on them. And, you know, if you're someone three pounds a week, yeah, three exactly. pounds a week. And I mean, if you're someone who's who's taking something for mental health, I mean, the last thing you want to do to that person is put weight on them because we absolutely know that, you know, weight gain is obviously going to cause a change in your mood and going to cause depression. Definitely. De oh, I was worse. I when I, I was like, OK. Just give it a try. Okay, so one week, two weeks, three weeks. Then I call them like I have to stop. Well, you can't stop at cold turkey. You just can't. It's even then. Then it's dangerous. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if people who uh, who stop Seroquel cold turkey get you know severe withdrawal symptoms. You know, particularly um, insomnia. You know, not being able to sleep at night. Um, and then you know that can lead because insomnia itself you know, can lead to anxiety, can lead to depression. I mean, we don't need to do, you know, a study on that. Anyone who knows that, you know, when they have, who has slept poorly for, for a night, especially for two or three nights in a row, is going to say that, you know, all they want to do now is sleep because their mood is so bad and their energy is so low. So right. you know, I do think that, you know, people should be aware of what they're taking um, and, and they should know that, you know, even if it is a prescription drug, you know, from, from a doctor, you know, there's still withdrawal effects and you can still, you know, get addicted to it. I went to, I went to, um, my doctor and some specialists and, and I was in therapy for a long time. And that was sort of the, in order to stay on the, um, the prescriptions you had to, you know, which was, I guess, a positive, you had a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of therapy, like talk therapy. And, a lot of the comeback from the doctor was it's menopause. It's just menopause. Oh, they don't teach us this in school. It's menopause. They're blowing so much off as it's menopause. And I don't know if like now being in menopause and three years removed from it, did all those, like, was it just menopause? No. <laughs> like I was surprised now that so many doctors were like, you just have to ride this out. It's just menopause. What do you think of that? I don't think, you know, that's, that's a good approach. And I think that either way, like whether it is menopause or whether it's not, you know, the symptoms need to be addressed. And in terms of like, you know, riding it out, I mean, if you want to do that and you choose to do that, you know, fine. But, um, you know, if there are ways to reduce the symptoms of menopause, then, then you should absolutely do that. And also too, you know, you want to make sure that, that it is menopause. So, you know, like you probably know, Jackie, like I'm, I don't just prescribe cannabis. I am, you know, a family doctor. Right. And I, I am pretty big on, on hormone replacement therapy for, 
uh, for, for women. And I do prescribe hormone replacement therapy for women. And, and, you know, it can be effective for a short period of time. And, you know, but if you are getting, you know, hormone replacement therapy, again, you want to know what you're getting. So, you know, a lot of women um, who are placed on hormone replacement therapy, well, first of all, sometimes they're just put on estrogen, which is terrible. So if you're taking estrogen, you absolutely need progesterone with it. And then the second thing too is, you know, a lot of the, the, the medicines that people or the hormones that uh, women are being prescribed, you know, they're not actually getting progesterone, they're getting medoxy progesterone. So, you know, for myself, like I only prescribe, um, I only prescribe progesterone from, from a compounded pharmacy to make sure that it's pure and that they're getting actual uh, progesterone. And then the other thing with that is, as well, is that when I'm replacing the estrogen, a lot of women don't know this, unfortunately, is that there, there's three different kinds of estrogen. You know, there's estrone, there's, est there's estradiol, and there's estriol. So I prescribe that in a very specific uh, order. So I don't prescribe any estrone at all because basically, you know, the, the, the benefits don't outweigh the risks. Um, when you're looking at estradiol, there's a little bit of, of risk for sure, but there's also a ton of benefit. And then when you're looking at estriol, that's actually very protective. So, you know, I prescribe a little, a, a, a specific ratio of estradiol and estriol, and then I prescribe um, progesterone. So, you know, for women who, you know, are having some trouble, you know, sleeping at night, you know, maybe cannabis is all that they need to get them through that period of menopause. But, you know, if you're having tons of, you know, mood swings and you're having, you know, hot flashes. Night um, sweats. Like crazy night sweats you know, a little bit of hormone replacement therapy can absolutely be, you know, incredible for, for, for women. So, you know, I think that, you know, when, when women go to, to the doctor for menopause um, or for menopausal symptoms, they should, you know, absolutely get tested for hormones. And also too, you know, if they're not, if that doesn't alleviate their symptoms, I think, you know, cannabis is a good option. And again, you know, it's not going to be a replacement of hormones, it's just going to be treating the symptoms. But, you know, if you're someone who just wants to, you know, stay off the hormones completely, which I completely understand, and you just want to use cannabis, um, you know, I think that should be an option too. Well, I, uh, I was just, I'm not on anything. And I, I seem to be okay, but I'm now that you're saying, I was just really scared of estrogen progesterone because isn't that how we get ovarian can't, not that I, I see, I don't even have ovaries. So I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get ovary can't ovary. Yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty low risk with the uh, hysterectomy. <laughs> oh my God. Like, so I just, could I still be on hormones even though like I'm. Uh, I mean, you could I'm definitely st still benefit from them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, right. lot, I, you know, I have, uh, you know, lots of women like right around your age that, that take a little bit of, of progesterone, a little bit of estrogen. And even I have a small amount of women where I will, where I will prescribe just a little tiny bit of topical testosterone. And that's just enough just to help a little bit with motivation and energy and also too with sex drive. Uh, because, you know, a lot of people don't realize that women's sex drive also comes from their testosterone. And just like, you know, men, women also have testosterone but they have about you know one tenth of the amount that um men have wow but they, but they do get a lot of their sex drive from from testosterone and just like um you know women have estrogen men have estrogen too and if if you take away too much estrogen uh in a man um it can actually cause really achy joints so you know that's oh. uh, that's oftentimes um you know a uh, a symptom of low estrogen in men so you, you want to have the right the right ratio you know overall like so what i'm listening to you and i'm thinking like i'm on my back nine i'm on my last <laughs> you know like i'm 48 i'm i'm more than half dead i want to really enjoy these remaining years i want to have fun i want to feel good i want to i want to relate and enjoy my partner on a whole nother level like i'm i'm mature enough to handle all you know yeah. I just, um that's why i i love the community i love being part of these talks and being a fly on the wall to all of it um part of being an influencer in the space is i'm not an expert on anything i sponge off of you guys i share the information that i get from you and a lot of ladies in over 40 reach out about well i'm on this do you think i should be doing this and i'm not 
I can forward them to you. <laughs> I'm not the person that they, but there's a lot of misconceptions and there's a lot of confusion about hormones and cannabis. And, you know, can you use both or one or the other? And if you only have one, then that's good. Like, there's just a lot of misconception. There's a lot of confusion. And I was, like I said, I was really scared to use estrogen or progesterone. Yeah, I mean, I think we've we've put that out there. And, and I mean, in some ways, you know, you do have to be careful with, with what you're using with regards to, you know, hormone replacement therapy. Because like I said, like I don't use the the the, the main medications that people use for hormone replacement therapy. I only prescribe, I've never ever prescribed, you know, a hormone outside of a compound from from a non-compounded pharmacy, you know, that I have written in a specific ratio. So, you know, that's the way that I do it. That's the way that I think that it should be done. And I feel that my patients get really good results that way. Um, and, you know, coming back to, I don't know, really sure if you really asked this as a question, but you sort of mentioned it, but yeah, I mean, I have lots of, of patients who are, you know, taking, um, taking hormones and they're, and they're taking cannabis and, you know, the combination is, is very effective for them. Um, but, you know, that's, that being said, like lots of women only use, you know, those medications that the hormones just for a few years, just to kind of get them through it. And then you have other, you know, women who want to take it for life because they find that it does increase the well-being overall. You know, they find that it does, you know, help with, with their sex drive, uh, that, you know, it find that, that it does help with the hot flashes, vaginal dryness, all this type of stuff. So, you know, I think that there's, there's room for both medicines and that, you know, if you are, you know, uh, you know, a, a middle-aged woman who, uh, who's going through menopause, you know, looking into both options, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, you, you should be doing. Um, what do you think of cannabis lubes? Of cannabis lubes? Lubes, lubricants, lubes. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I think it's a great idea. You know, I think that, uh, you know, if, if you need a little bit of, of uh, lubrication, then, then then go for it and use it. You know, I haven't used it myself personally, uh, but, you know, I, uh, I think that, you know, if, if, it, if it works, it works, you know. Um, but my kind of go-to, I guess, natural uh, sexual lubricants has always been coconut oil. You know, I think oh. people use that. Uh, I mean, that has antibacterial properties. You know, there's, there's, there's tons of great things about coconut oil. So I thought you were going to say spit. <laughs> <laughs> spit. Spit is another great one too. But if spit's not doing it, then you can always bring out the coconut oil. <laughs> so many people in the space send me their lubes and their potions and lotions. And I really haven't tried, I feel, I'll say it, I really haven't tried any of them other than to remove my eye makeup. <laughs> <laughs> How effective is it at that? It's awesome. It works phenomenally. Well, it's effective at removing your eye makeup. And I'm not <laughs> as it's, uh, as it's primary. So a, a lot of times they're like, can you write me a review? I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and no. uh, I know we only have, uh, you know, not even uh, 20 uh, minutes left, Jackie. I want to get to um, a couple of other things. So I know that, you know, a lot of people in the cannabis industry, and you're definitely one of them, um, or seem to be anyway, you know, they've graduated, so to speak, from cannabis into psilocybin or, or mushrooms. And, you know, have you felt that um, psilocybin has been a complement to cannabis? Is it a better medicine than cannabis? Have you, you know, excluded cannabis for some periods and just used mushrooms? Or, you know, how do you kind of incorporate um, mushrooms and in, in, into, your, into your health routine? Um, well... <laughs> I actually, since COVID, <laughs> have been using more mushrooms than cannabis, um, microdose, and then low dose, so like more than a mic would be a micro. Um, I've gone as high as six grams. Um, I am it, dur during during COVID a lot of alone time, a lot of journaling, a lot of sitting outside and just trying to figure out what's real and what's not, or what's my real and what you know, like what's there's a lot going on in the world and I can't change a lot, all of it. I can change some of it I, that, that directly affects me and my world. And that's, I was, I think with social media and my following and stuff being so big and so large and so loud that I get confused of what's, what's really important, what's really affecting my day to day, my family and my four walls. That's, where I just had to take it all back since the starting of COVID and I was so overwhelmed and um, 
I'm a big mouth. I'm a, I say ridiculous things. I look ridiculous. I act ridiculous. And there, I just didn't feel like there was a place for that right now. Um, I wanted to take a, a way step back from everything from, I mean, we're supposed to take a step back, but I just, even virtually, I just decided I'm going to use these mushrooms or I'm going to work with my mushrooms and um, discover myself, figure out myself where what seemed to be so important and what seemed to matter so greatly for most of us doesn't anymore. And I just, I wanted to, I wanted to think about things that I hadn't thought about in a long time. I wanted to look at things differently. I wanted to feel differently and mushrooms, as much as I was scared of them years and years ago, they're, it's phenomenal. I mean, I always have mushrooms with me. Um, and and what, I, what do you think they've alleviated, um, like specifically as that, that cannabis didn't, if you can. Well, kind of pick that. so my, I think so anxiety and worry are different okay. with, with mushrooms. I don't have the worry that I, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, sure. I'm not as worried. I'm, I, I feel almost like, like mushrooms are a frame. And I'm inside of it when I'm on, when I'm using mushrooms and I'm experiencing mushrooms and I, and, and like in my daily life, if I'm, if I've microdosed or low dose, whatever it is I'm doing and have my tea and sit outside, I feel not safe, not, I don't even know if protected is the word. That's why I, I picture it a frame mushrooms and I'm inside and everything is okay. Everything is, I, I find it very hard to be super angry or, or de- or sad on a level that is like really like a hurtful, heavy level. It's hard to, to do that when you're on mushrooms. Um, it, I, so I ex- explained to my sons, it's almost looking at the world through rose co- colored glasses. Not that everything is perfect and everything is going to be okay, but just a gentler, kinder way to, a different perspective, a different, I, I have such tremendous social anxiety. It's funny considering what I do, but I consider that acting. Like I put the the facade on and I go out in the world and then I come home and I'm who I really am. And mushrooms make it okay. And I'm, I'm okay either way. They're all parts of me and there's many parts of me. And I think it was the mushrooms that figured out or through the using the mushrooms and journaling that we're not all going to be like this. Some of us are going to be really loud. Some of us are going to be really reckless. Some of us are very passionate and that's okay. It's okay. I'm not, and I, that's why I say the kindness thing. Mushrooms also have, when they're, your people are screaming at me, set like screaming at me. My DMs are blowing up. I get about 1500 messages a day. So, and you only see nine, 10 on the thing. So when my girlfriends message me and they're like, you have a message in days, all that overwhelmingness and what's important and what's not, and what's real. And what's I, I am experiencing that. I'm understanding that. And I'm seeing it differently. I'm relating to it differently. Like, um, like the hate and the anger online, I just, I can't fight back. And not, I mean, it's not that I can't fight back. There's no need to fight back. I don't want to fight back. I don't, here's what I think, take it or leave it. Here's what I feel, take it or leave it. It comes from a place of kindness and a place of love and that's it. And that's, that's it is how I feel since, and I'm really, like I've been using like four, six grams of mushrooms. I go, it's never been a party for me. It's not something I take with friends or a bunch of friends. I don't put loud music on or anything. It's always uh, like the, my ritual, my ceremony with mushrooms is even like if it's a rainy day and you have a cup of tea, a mushroom tea and just journal and relax and figure it out. I'll figure it out. I don't need everybody telling me how I should feel about my journey. I'm figuring it out. So it's kind of like a deeper sense of healing overall is what it kind of sounds like. And I'm glad we're having this, this conversation today just because I, I tweeted out something yesterday because I found this study that, uh, you know, I haven't really seen very many studies comparing cannabis to psilocybin um, because, you know, we, we've all heard of the term 
you know, um, uh, psychedelic enhanced psychotherapy or psilocybin enhanced psychotherapy, but I've never really heard the term, you know, cannabis enhanced psychotherapy, although, you know, I'm sure lots of people have or do psychotherapy, you know, under the influence of cannabis. But right. what was interesting was that they compared the two groups and, and basically, uh, you know, they said that about one third of people who use THC are able to have a breakthrough session as opposed to um, the people who are using um, psilocybin. So, so just to kind of you know get specific, I, I think the numbers were 17 to 19 percent of people who use THC um, said that they had a breakthrough session, whereas about 59 percent of people who use psilocybin said they had a breakthrough session. So it seems like for most people, you know, there's like a deeper sense of healing that go that 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 uh, that you know is is going on when they're using psilocybin versus versus cannabis. Um, but it is good to know too, you know, for people who are, you know, very, very averse to using, you know, psychedelic drugs and, and changing, you know, their mind, um, that, you know, cannabis, which is a little bit gentler, may be effective. But, you know, from the literature, it doesn't seem to be as effective as psilocybin uh, overall. Um, and on that note, too, I, I just want to ask you, Jackie, um, specifically about uh, the uh, microdosing. So, you know, what protocol have you found to be most effective for you? And is there a particular strain um, that you also find to be effective for you? Because a lot of people don't realize that just like cannabis, you know, psilocybin also has, has different strains. Well, for my, I, I really do like to drink a tea. I like, and the teas are a mixture. My, they're, you know, like with Golden Teacher and Lion's Mane and Cubensis and the whole, I like the, the blends and, and um, I have Crohn's, so I have stomach issues and I find the, when I, so if I'm taking, eating raw mushrooms and, you know, a gram plus, I feel it. I feel nauseous. I feel uncomfortable. And, but with the lower doses and the micro doses blends, I, I don't, it's almost like that part of it, the, the experience, like right the onset when it finally kicks instead of that queasy, uncomfortable feeling. Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe mushrooms aren't for everyone with stomach issues or I don't know, you know, but yeah. the, the, the blends, uh, uh, seem to help a ton. Uh, someone sent me a message to say, soak your raw mushrooms in lemon juice. And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you know about I that? I haven't heard about that one, actually, soaking, uh, soaking them in lemon juice. What was the, the premise behind it? What did I say was going to happen? It, they just told me I wouldn't get, I wouldn't have that queasy, nauseous feeling if you soak them in lemon juice. They were like, because really it's a poison. It's poisoning you. You need the lemon juice. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've heard of people, you know, say that when they when they use mushrooms, particularly with high doses, sometimes, you know, they can have some nausea or some anxiety, you know, some people have zero. So to counteract that, some people do use just a small amount of THC. When I mean a small amount, I mean about two and a half milligrams of THC, and that generally, you know, can help some people with, with a little bit of, of nausea. Oh. Um, so I've heard that, you know, from other physicians, you know, credible um, physicians, I haven't heard, you know, too much, unfortunately, about the, um, uh, about, about the lemon juice, but interesting too, you know, when you talk about, you know, the blends and that type of, of stuff too, because generally speaking, and I'm sure you, you know, are aware of this too, like I'm aware really of two sort of like major protocols for using psilocybin, uh, mushrooms. One of them was from, uh, Paul Stamets and he says, use, you know, hundred, uh, milligrams, four to five days a week, and then to take two days off. Um, and then the other one is from James Fadiman, and he indicates to take about 0.3 to 0.5 grams every third day. Um, some people, you know, just do that twice per week instead of every third day, just, just for simplicity's sake. I was doing 0.2 only because I was scared. I was a little nervous and I still wanted to function. Like I still wanted to be able to like, if I'm going to take this in the morning, I still want to be able to have my day. But I do, so my microdose or low dose like daily would be uh, 0.5 milligrams for five days with two days off. Okay. And that's, that's, what, that's what I usually do. And now I will, I don't miss, like I don't go days without mushrooms. Like I will have them in some form, whether it's like a little piece, a little low dose chocolate mushroom or a tea or whatever, um, the capsules. Um, I, whereas I will go days without cannabis of any kind. Um, I don't go 
days without mushrooms anymore. That's mm-hmm. sort of, that's I mean that's new since COVID, but that's something I'm sure I'll carry on for a while. I and, just uh, feeling the weight of the world. It just helps a lot. <laughs> and, and last question too on the uh, on, on the microdosing, and I'm just going to chat with you quickly about um, the macrodosing before before we leave. Um, mm-hmm. Did you ever use niacin with it? Because I know that in in Paul Stamets. Uh, protocol. Um, he calls it uh, NLP. So he uses niacin, the lion's mane, um, and, uh, and psilocybin. And, and for people who you know aren't aware, lion's mane is, is part of uh, what people are calling now functional mushrooms. So just like reishi and, and chaga and these other mushrooms and turkey tail that you may have heard of before, you know, cordyceps is another one. Um, you know, lion's mane is one that seems to have the most evidence for, for affecting your overall cognition in a positive way. Um, and I, I've seen at least one study anyway, saying that it actually can help cognition and healthy people. So, you know, if you're, you know, perfectly healthy mentally, you know, using a little bit of lion's mane can give you, you know, a little bit of a boost, but I'm pretty sure Paul's, um, Paul's stick with that is that he believes that, you know, by having a little bit of nice and you're going to absorb it. Um, more, more in, in your brain, I believe is what, is what he says. And it's going to have a little bit more of an effect overall. Um, have you ever tried using it with, with the niacin or? No, no, I haven't. But where do I get niacin? <laughs> niacin is just, it's just a B vitamin. You know, it's very, very cheap. Um, the only thing with it is that, and I have to look into this too, is that, you know, a lot of people who take niacin will use it for, for cholesterol because it is good at lowering um, cholesterol, but a lot of people don't like the flush that comes with it. So they get these non-flush versions oh imagine that you know with with paul's thinking that the the flush may be required now i'm kind of one of these weirdos where i actually like the flush um you know i like the the tingling feeling that that it kind of gives me when i take it uh whereas some people don't so you know but that is one of one of the things that he added into uh his protocol Um, i love that you're a weirdo (laughs) i love being a weirdo i'm never gonna change (laughs) I think that, you know, that's just the way I am. So may as well just, uh, just <laughs> dive right in, you know. Um, but I do want to, you know, ask you, because uh, you did mention six grams. So, you know, the, the classic kind of hero dose, as, as Terrence McKenna um, used to say, it was five grams. So a lot of people, you know, do six grams just to be safe. Um, you know, usually, you know, at this dose, um, people kind of break through to the other, other sides, so to speak. So, I know you probably, you know, would like a little bit more time to chat about that, but can you, um, you know, kind of uh, tell me your, your experience in, in two or three minutes? Sure. Um, I ha- I mean, like a lot of us, I have a lot of trauma, a lot of, you know, stuff from, from childhood. And uh, I'm of the age, the demographic where like our parents were checked out and the ones that were checked in were not that great. <laughs> so I just, um, I was feeling really rotten and I was feeling really heavy about a lot of things and no one was going to be home. There was nothing to do the next day. Perfect time to put some quiet, I collect vinyl. I, you know, put a quiet little, it was actually a Seth Rogen record. He sent me these house plant things, whatever. I put on some, some of my albums that were like a low calming music and was only going to take two. And they actually didn't taste like crap, so I, I ate them all. Nice. <laughs> and, and just, and really, I was only going to take two. And then just went with it. But it'd be right when I started to get a little tingly and a little, like, my eyesight, like, I started to see a lot of stuff, um, I grabbed my journal and I started writing. And I'm like, these will make, if nothing but more, they will make great little captions for my dumb Instagram posts. <laughs> <laughs> let's try and kill two birds with one stone and it wasn't all good I, and I would say I had a bad trip but it was the most I have learned about myself um, I have a very abusive very a horrific father and I feel terrible saying that but he he obviously had a terrible childhood and a terrible, you know, his trauma and his pain and he has mental illness that was never, ever, ever been addressed, talked about some, you know, it's never come up in anything. And, uh, I, I never actually thought of that once until this, until I took these 
until I took the mushrooms and yeah, even think, trauma that's important for people to know about you know like trauma can get passed on from one generation to another when it's exactly when it's and I never thought about that I mean I'm I'm all me 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 why 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 and this was a I was a little scared during it and it lasted a little longer like I was a little deeper than I wanted to be for a little longer than I had hoped but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about a lot of things. And even with the crying, I'm so emotional in public and I'm so, and that's okay. Like, that's not a bad thing. That's them saying it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And uh, that trip whoo, was, yeah. <laughs> was well, it long. seems like it's kind of like the, the classic psychedelic line that they don't give you what, you what you want, they give you what you need. And it seems like that's kind of happened with your, with your experience. Um, I'd love to chat about that experience a little bit more. Unfortunately, we're kind of running out of time. I know you have a lot of uh, great <laughs> no things going on, Jackie. So can you uh, let the audience know like where, where they can find you and, and uh, any, <laughs> any, any projects and that type of stuff? You can find me on OnlyFans. <laughs> nice. And what can it's, they expect to find on OnlyFans, Jackie? So it's, it's, the, it's just an uncensored version of my Instagram. It's my same thoughts and feelings, just uncensored, unscripted. Um, there's lots of nip slips. Uh, nice. I'm, I'm, loves that. I'm a very hedonistic person by nature. I'm a wild, crazy child, and that's on OnlyFans. Um, I felt like social media wasn't celebrating me anymore. Why am I putting all this, you know, all this time and effort into it? Why don't I go to a platform that celebrates people like me and our messages? So I made the jump and it's great. And uh, still writing for Kind Magazine, um, Cannabis Wiki Friends or, you know, we'll, maybe when the world opens up again, we'll be back out on, in the world, who knows? But I uh, think things are good. And I'm really, really hopeful. I'm really, really hopeful. And I didn't take the pivot to OnlyFans lightly. I mean, I know it's a, left a bad taste in some people's mouth, but I'm sure I already had a bad taste in their mouth to begin with. So. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing that. You know, I really do appreciate it. And congratulations on, on making it <laughs> move. And you know, we wish you all the best with, with your uh, OnlyFans page. So thanks again <laughs> for coming on the podcast and sharing your story with us, uh, Jackie. Really do appreciate it. And uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to sharing space and time with you again. Okay. We'll definitely do it soon, Jackie. Take care.